Hey folks, in this short video, we're going to look at cross sections and, and we're going to look at basic cross sections, parallel and perpendicular to the base of the figure. And so let's begin by just defining cross sections. And so what a cross section is, is it's the intersection of a 3D solid and a plane. And so I'm just going to draw one rough sketch right here. Let's say I have this cylinder and I were to slice it open with a plane right there, you, you might be able to imagine that the shape of the cross section, the intersection, would be this circle right here. And so this idea of cross sections is it's really hard to visualize for some people because some people really have a natural uh, knack for spatial reasoning and some people don't. And so what I found is I found a little interactive uh, kind of website or applet that will help us kind of visualize some of these. And so I've got the link to this applet I'm gonna use. I'm also gonna put this link in the show description. Uh, but basically we're gonna predict the shape of the cross section for cylinders, prisms, cones, and pyramids when the cross sec sections are parallel to the base and perpendicular to the base. I've kind of colored these together because I think these two are a similar idea, and I've colored these two together because I think they're a similar idea. And so let's first begin by looking at cylinders. And so I've kind of already spoiled one of them for you. I already drew it, and so we know that a cylinder that's parallel to the base is going to be a circle because I kind of just drew that. I, I sliced that cylinder in half and my slice was parallel to the base. But let's let's have a look at it using this applet. I think this is really helpful. So um, looking at this right here, you can see that if you slice it parallel to the base right there, this shows you that the shape of that cross section would be a circle and you can kind of visualize it right there. OK, now what if we went perpendicular to the base? So if I, you know, this, these little sliders are so great in this little program, so I can just do that. What if we did perpendicular to the base and you can see that by going perpendicular to the base, it looks like our cross section becomes a rectangle. Now this one looks like a square, but it's just because that's the how tall this particular cylinder is. But if we had a taller cylinder, it would be a rectangle. So coming back over here, we know that if we find the cross section of a cylinder parallel to the base, the, sh the cross section will be in the shape of a circle. And if we're perpendicular to the base, the cross section will be in the shape of a rectangle. Now let's look at our next shape. I believe our next shape, we're gonna do a prism and specifically, we're going to do a pentagonal prism, okay? So uh, this applet, once again, is so cool because I can click down here to get my prism, and then we're going to change our lateral faces to five. So let's first look at what happens if we go parallel to the base. And if I go parallel to the base, you can see that that cross section, it kind of shows it over here on the graph, that cross section, the, the shape of the intersection, if I were to take a horizontal slice through this prism, it would be in the same shape as the base of the prism. It would be a pentagon like that. Now, what happens if we went perpendicular to the base? What if I went perpendicular to the base? Well, let me get it just right. There it is. If I went perfectly perpendicular to the base, we see that the cross section would be a rectangle. So we see that that's really the same principle for cylinders as it is for prisms. When you're parallel to the base, the cross section makes the same shape as the base. But when you're perpendicular to the base, the cross section will make a rectangle. And if you don't believe me on that, I can change the number of lateral faces. I can make this, shoot, how many sides is that? I don't know, seven, eight. But that, that vertical cross section that's perpendicular to the base is still the rectangle. But once again, if we went parallel to the base, that cross section is once again the same shape as the base. So to summarize for the prism, it's really the same rule as the cylinder. Parallel to the base will make um, in this particular example, a pentagon, because we have a pentagonal prism. But if we had a, hexa a hexagonal prism, it would be a hexagon. If we had an octagonal prism, it would be an octagon. And if we went perpendicular to the base, once again, we're going to have a rectangle. Now, if you start going these slant cross sections, you can have all sorts of crazy stuff. And we're not worried about that in this video. We're looking strictly parallel and perpendicular to the base. But now I'd like to look at a cone, okay? Let's look at a cone. And so maybe pause the video and try to visualize, try to guess, okay, if I slice this parallel to the base, what happens? If I slice it perpendicular to the base, what happens? But I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over. If we go parallel to the base, remember the base on a cone is gonna be this on the bottom. And so we've got our cone here. And if I slice it parallel to the base, it's gonna make a circle, just like the base is, okay? If we go perpendicular to the base, and specifically, if I go perpendicular to the base and through the vertex. Now, I realize that I could move this. Um, let's see, if I move it that way, it starts to change things. But if I go through the vertex, right through the middle of this shape, and perpendicular to the base, our cross section here makes a 
triangle. So if we come back to summarize, if we are parallel to the base of our cone, that's going to be a circle, albeit a smaller circle than the base, right? The higher up we go, the smaller that circle cross-section will be. And if we go perpendicular to the base, that will make a triangle. Okay, we are almost there. I think the last thing we're gonna look at is pyramids and then we will be all done. So let's look at a pyramid. And so, um, and I wanna have a general rule. We'll do a hexagonal pyramid. We'll say, in other words, a pyramid that has a hexagon as its base. And so let's see what happens when we create our cross section that is parallel to the base. I don't know if that's perfectly parallel. Let's see, kind of clicks in right there. If we're parallel to the base, we see that kind of like the cone, our cross section just becomes a smaller version of whatever the base is. In our cone, we kind of had the big circle as the base, and then our cross section was a smaller circle. Here, our base is a big hexagon, and our cross section is the smaller hexagon right there. So a cross section parallel to the base on a pyramid will make the same shape as the base, but smaller. And then what if we go perpendicular to the base and go vertical? Once again, we're looking at specifically going through the vertex. And we see that when we go through the vertex, no matter what shape the base is, it doesn't matter how many sides I put, on the base of my pyramid, that vertical cross section is going to be a triangle, okay? Now, if we start moving that back and forth, you can get some trapezoids and some other weird things like that. But once again, in this video, we're, we're just looking at what happens if we go perpendicular to the base and through that vertex. So for our hexagonal pyramid, when we're parallel to the base, we're gonna make a hexagon. But once again, that's not always gonna be a hexagon. It's whatever shape the base is. So if we had a square pyramid, our cross section parallel to the base would be a square, just smaller. And then if we're perpendicular to the base, that's when we're slicing it up and down through the vertex, there our cross section will be a triangle. Now, let's wrap this up real quick by summarizing on our next slide. So what could you conclude about the cross section that is parallel to the base of a prism? Well, it's gonna be the same shape as the base. And specifically, it's gonna be the same size as well. In a prism, it will be congruent to the base, okay? But what if you're perpendicular to the base of a prism? Well, in that case, it always made a rectangle regardless of the number of sides. And then lastly, what if you were parallel to the base of a pyramid? Or I could even maybe add the same rule for a cone. It will be the same shape as the base. But this one's not congruent to the base because it's going to be a little bit smaller, right? As we work that, that horizontal cross-section further and further up that pyramid or that cone, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So there is really your basic ideas about cross-section. You can go as in-depth as you want with this. You can find the area of the cross-section, all sorts of that other stuff. But right now, we're really just focusing on being able to identify or guess what shape that cross-section would make if you sliced up that figure.